Hello, in this video we're going to look at risk and insurance. We have an individual who will either be healthy with a wealth of $8 or sick with a wealth of $1. The expected value of wealth equals $6. Let's first solve for the probability of being healthy. We set up our expected value formula, which is the probability of being healthy times the wealth when the person is healthy, which is $8. And we can see that $8 on the graph over here. And then we're going to add to it 1 minus the probability of being healthy, which is just a probability of being sick, multiplied by the wealth when the person is sick, and that's $1. And we can see that on the graph over here at $1. If we connect these two points between 8 and 1 with a line or a cord, that would be our expected utility cord. We'll get to that later. So anyways, setting this formula, this expected value formula, equal to $6, and we're going to solve for the probability of being healthy, P subscript H. So doing the math here, subtracting 1 from both sides, and then dividing through by 7, we have the probability of being healthy. And to get the probability of being sick, it's just going to be 1 minus the probability of being healthy, or 2 sevenths where the probability sum the 1. All right, let's move on. What is the utility of the expected value of wealth? So the expected value of wealth is $6 or $6,000, and we're going to plug that into the utility function. Come across, and we get an answer of 6.6. .6. What is the expected utility? So that answer is going to be read off the expected utility cord, which is a line that connects the wealth when healthy and the wealth when sick. So plugging this $6 into the expected utility cord, coming across, we get 5.8. Is this person risk averse? Yes. The utility of the expected value, 6.6, .6, exceeds the expected utility of 5.8. The person prefers a guaranteed $6 to facing a risk with an expected value of $6. What is the size of the expected loss of wealth? It's just going to be 8 minus 6. So if you're healthy, you have 8. Okay, but the expected value here of wealth is 6. So the answer here is 8 minus 6 or $2. What is the actuarially fair insurance premium? It's just going to equal the expected loss of $2 or the probability of the loss times the size of the loss. And as we learned at the beginning, the probability of being sick is 2 sevenths. And the size of the loss is 8 minus 1 or 7. So doing the math here, we get an answer of $2. Our next question, what is the risk premium? This is going to be the difference between the expected value of a gamble and its certainty equivalent. So we already learned that the expected value of six is $6, and we're going to see that the certainty equivalent is going to be $4. So the answer here is going to be $2. At a wealth of $4, okay, a guaranteed wealth of $4, the utility is 5.8, and that equals the expected utility of this gamble when the expected value of wealth is $6. What is the maximum willingness to pay for full coverage insurance? The answer here is going to be just a risk premium, which we already found is $2, plus the actuarially fair premium. So 2 plus 2 is $4. The person would prefer, obviously, to pay less. So with full coverage insurance, if the person is healthy, they have a wealth of 8 they pay a premium of $4. They have a net wealth here of $4, okay, guaranteeing them a utility of 5.8. If the person is sick, they have a wealth of $1. They paid a premium of $4, but they have an insurance reimbursement of $7. So their net wealth is still $4. And as we learned here with the guaranteed wealth of $4 because of insurance, 
your utility is going to be 5.8. So this level of utility, 5.8, is equivalent to the expected utility of having no insurance and facing the risk of losing $7. Okay, that's it.